world welcome to another edition of here and be healed with pastor tim and myself vicki campbell come on in family listen like and share what we're going to do is we're going to piggyback off of uh something that we taught at gentle hands ministry i want to pray and then what i want to do is i want to exhort that ministry with because pastor god is Jared doing something and great and you need to know it uh, we want to spread the word to all the surrounding areas if you don't have a church home you're looking for a place you need to get to Farmerville, Louisiana. I think it's, I forget the address, but it's on Wheeler Street, Wheeler Avenue. Uh, but we'll find out and we'll come back with you and, and tell you those things. But let us pray, get in the Word. And this is something that the Lord had gave the man of God, uh, talking about Thanksgiving service, where they wanted to uh, kind of play into celebrating Thanksgiving, but on, from a healing standpoint. And we thought, we, we really didn't know what direction we were going to go in. But it seems like the, the Lord came with a, a teaching and an empowerment uh, moment and experience. And there was still a mighty move of God. But I'm telling you, God is doing some great things in that ministry. And you just definitely, you got to see it to believe it. So let's pray, get in the Word. And we're going to kind of, I'm going to kind of exhort what God is doing in Farmerville and also pray with you. Uh, so let's just, just magnify God today. Father, we thank you for thank the word you, that we're about to receive. We thank you, Lord, about the healing that's going to go forth in the ministry of God tonight yes. to minister to your people, Lord. I thank you for the love that you have toward us, that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And the compassion that you've shown, Father, that yes. you were sending your only son to die for thank us. You, you cared just enough for us that you would shed yes. your innocent blood to save wretches like us. And Lord, we just want to say thank you today. Thank we you. do celebrate yes. this day of, of Thanksgiving that we celebrated that has just passed and giving you thanks in all ways for all things, God. And so we just pray that this word, God, will just permeate in our hearts that as we take it and we lay hold to it and we, you know, play f hold fast to it and see that it manifests in our life in the yes. mighty name of Jesus. All for the glory of you to the edifying of your kingdom yes. that we can show forth the glory of our Lord. And just give him praise for it. Now bless your people, Lord. Yes. It's only you can. Thank I you, pray that you would touch them from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet. And while I'm yet speaking yes. that the word is being manifested in their heart to produce that which they're desiring for. Healing for their bodies. Peace for their minds, oh God. Consolation for their heart, Lord. And prosperity and provision, Lord, for that financial need. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' in mighty Jesus name we pray. Name. Also, as the Spirit of God bring to my remembrance and yes. reconciliation for relationships. Yes. Lord. We magnify you, Lord, and thank you in advance for what you're going to do. So before we get into the Word, I do really, really do want to exalt the ministry work that God is doing. He's been doing a work, and the work is consistent. The work is um, powerful, mm -hmm. and we just thank God for his minister, his man of God, the, the, the saints of God that labor and co-labor with that ministry. We thank God for the precious people that are there. And we just thank God for his faithfulness. And that every time we go, we see the things that God is doing. A uh, ministry with a spirit of excellence, always on the cutting edge, doing things that most people will say that, you know, that's not necessarily what, a ministry that believe in giving God all of their best, Amen. not shortchanging anything. Therefore, God deserves the best. We want the best from God, and so they're giving God their best. We're seeing God do miracles, signs, and wonders. The testimonies that are coming out of that ministry are phenomenal profound people are being healed from all kinds of diseases yes, uh, deliverance is taking place Amen. and so we just give yes. God praise and glory now this is not something that just happened this and this is something that's going on on a continual basis Sunday after Sunday you know and uh, there there have been times where the enemy have attacked them but they've always prevailed coming forth it's because of the strong anointing that's there that God is doing in their midst and I'm just expecting many many things to come forth and many many testimonies to be heard word worldwide and to see and to proclaim and declare that people will be coming from all different places god is about to take them into a new area of ministry where they're going to be streaming live and you know that streaming live goes all over the place australia uh mm -hmm. japan india and i right. believe when people hear the great things that god is doing that they know that there's still a church that believe in signs and wonders. They still believe in the greater works that God called us to do. That when those that need healing, that they can't find help, 
from the hospitals and from the doctors and from the other surrounding churches mm -hmm. who don't believe in those things will come to right. the arena of healing and the arena of liberty to, so they can be healed, delivered, and set mm -hmm. free. And so we just pray for God's continued divine uh, manifestation in that place. We pray continue for God's protection around mm -hmm. the ministry, yes. around the people of God, around the man of God. Mm -hmm. We pray for protection concerning the vision that God has given the man of God and the woman of God, that God would raise them up in his end time to be a clarion call to the body of Christ, to take us back to the old paths where Jesus confirms his word continually with miracle signs and wonders. And not just the man of God, but that he's equipping the body to do the same thing. That wherever you go, you see the men of God, you see God's ambassadors, not just him, but even the lay people, those that are in the pews, even the babies, young folks, that are doing the same thing that God has commanded us to do. And that is to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, preach the gospel to the poor, declare the liberty of our Lord. And we're going to see those things doing, being done, and, and just to see what God is doing. I'm telling you, you got to go there to see it for yourself. It's Amen. something that must be yes. experienced and not something that has just been expressed with word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So you got to, we got to be like that woman that left the, the well and went back and told the city, come see a man that, that told me all about myself, that we can go to a place and come see Jesus who is still working signs and wonders mm -hmm. and confirming his word. Where yes. the blind are seen, the dumb are speaking, the mm -hmm. deaf are hearing, yes. the dead are being raised, and you can just come in the place and experience the presence of God just by sitting in the building. And don't be nervous because I'm telling you, you will see the move of God and you will see people experience it. And so mm -hmm. you just, I'm just telling you, be ready. Well, you can see that the things that happen in the Bible that you read about, you don't have to read about it anymore. You can experience it firsthand. And we just thank God for what he's doing. We really want, really want to just continue to lift up Pastor Butler and Tonda Butler, mm -hmm. his lovely daughter and, and uh, um, son-in-law, the things that he's going to Corey. Uh, is it Johnson? I think it's Johnson. Um, and I don't know if she's going to get nervous, but Brandy Butler. We are both soon to be married, and so I think I still have the privilege and the honor of bringing those two together. So we're just thinking about all the things that great things that God is doing. I just can't say enough. Mm -hmm. And so we had the opportunity and two ministers there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that word that God put in Pastor Butler's mouth and his heart, and we're going to expound on it today. And we're going to call those things that be not as though they were. We're going to say, thank God I'm healed. And I know everyone has just celebrated Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. some of us don't feel the turkey anymore maybe you're not eating any leftovers <laughs> but you know what i want my wife to read uh the second first thessalonians 5 and 18. this is going to be our foundational <coughs> scripture that we can get into and then begin to see god do things in your life i, I hear the lord saying it's time to step it up it is yes. time to step it up and something you know it's, it's amazing that when we minister like with a preacher minister and you hear a word from the lord and he said hi that that, they thought that was for them. That was for me. Yeah. That was for me. And then when, as we was ministering and teaching, uh, the, the word came forth, get ready for an adventure. Mm -hmm. And so I'm ready for an adventure. So when I heard that word, that means it's time to go a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Some of us right now, we're at a certain status quo, and we're getting comfortable. And if you start getting comfortable, the next thing comes in is laziness. Right. And so we don't want to get lazy. We want to keep on moving in God, pressing in God. And so I'm ready for an adventure. And I hope you're ready for an adventure. And guess what? The adventure starts tonight. So I want you to put your thinking cap on, go and dust that vision off, and take that vision to another level. I want you to, you know what? I want you to stretch God. Stretch God. How do you stretch God? By doing exactly what he said. He said, I am able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. And now is your chance to prove God. Say, okay, God, you said you can do exceeding and abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think. So now elevate your thinking, elevate your asking, and then get ready for God to take you on the wildest trip of your life. And it might be scary at times, but fear not. I want to believe and you're going to see what God is going to do in your life. I just believe it. So it's not good just to talk about how good God is. It's time to manifest and see and experience how good he is. And I just believe he is who he said he is. He's a provider. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. And you know what? He is your Lord. So we're going to see him do some awesome things, especially this year 2019. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm telling you, limit not the Holy One of Israel. I want you to th start thinking about some things that are desires of your heart and don't be afraid to 
put it out there in God and let God prove mm -hmm. himself strong in your life. Amen. Let's read what it says uh, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now when we talk about thank God I'm healed, what we're doing is we're calling things that be not as though they were, and we're giving expression of gratitude unto God even before it has manifested. So to have that attitude is to say within ourselves, I believe it's already done. And so what I'm doing, I'm thanking God in advance, mm -hmm. and I can begin to praise God. And so the thing that I want to do is remind myself what God mm -hmm. is doing and continue to declare it, yes. calling those things that be not as though they were. And with a joyful heart, knowing that God's thoughts toward me are peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. So I'm always continually with a perpetual expectation, believing that he's going to bring that desire to pass. And always putting God in remembrance of his word. For God is governed by his word. The angels of the Lord minister on our behalf according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. To remind God, wait a minute, God. It is your expectation, your great expectations to give me an expectation. Yes. Your thoughts of me are peace and not of evil. What's in peace? Rest, yes. comfort, provision, health. All of these things are a part of peace. And, you know, and there's ease. The reason why they call certain diseases dis-ease because it takes away your ease. It takes away your comfort. Now, when I say comfort, I'm talking about that which gives you rest. I'm not talking about getting lazy because we already talked about coming out of that dis out of that comfort zone and to see God do something. I think that whenever your faith is not being challenged, it is not a real faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So we always ought to be hoping for something to come to pass and not just wishing, no, not wishing but hoping with an expectation that this is going to come to pass. And so therefore he says, in everything give thanks, yes. for this is the will of God concerning you. This is the will of God concerning you. So now Paul was giving them a lot of things to do, but this is the one thing that we want to talk about because if we understood the power of thanksgiving, you'll begin to see a lot of things will just blow your mind at what God is going to do. The Bible says, Enter in his gates with thanksgiving, enter in his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you'll see that there is power in thanksgiving. For there are even commandments where God says that thanksgiving offering, God wants to see that you appreciate him. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we should teach our children, we would give them, I, I, like I would make them a sandwich, and I would always say, give me a bite. And if, you, if they were a child that said, nope, they had a selfish nature, and mm -hmm. we would have to work with that selfish nature because the Bible says it's more blessed to give than receive. Right. And I never had a child that did not say, give me a bite. They didn't offer it up to me, and I would take a bite. I would really take it. So what, I, what, you, what we would be doing, and see, I, I was doing this before I even had any sense of knowing what I was doing. It was the Father's mm -hmm. nature in me teaching my child how to be a giver, how to be a worshiper, how to give back unto that which God, which had been given to them. I right. made the sandwich. I gave them the sandwich. They turned around and gave me a part of it because I asked for it. Mm -hmm. And so I would test the nature of a child. There have been children, not mine. There have mm -hmm. been other children that you do that, and they are quickly jerk it back. And then you have to deal with that heart because yeah. if you allow that heart to stay in a child, <laughs> that child will be a selfish child. That child will be a, a child that will have a, a, a kind of a, a selfish uh, disposition and personality. Mm -hmm. But that one that will quickly offer it up, then you will see that that's a very good heart of a person. That, that person has a heart of a worshiper, a heart of a giver, and it's mm -hmm. more blessed to give than receive. And you never have to worry about that child. And, we, right. and, I, and I didn't want the sandwich. It didn't did I needed the sandwich. It's not that I was hungry. I could have made my own sandwich. But the fact that what is in my child's heart? Right. What does my child's heart stand? Mm -hmm. And every time I would test them, it always did me good that they would give unto me. When God asks us for certain things, whether it's a tithe, where it says, uh, honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thine increase. Yes. He don't need your stuff, but he wants to know where your heart is. And when he took them through the wilderness, it was not to 
to destroy them. He wanted to see what was in their heart and would they worship him and serve him and obey him. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things that we're going through, God wants to see how we're going to react in it. Will right. we be thankful in it? So Paul says in all things, give thanks. Oh, so you're saying when bad things happen to me, give thanks unto God. Thank him in advance for the deliverance that he's about to bring. Amen. So that when you are in the battle, know this here, that yes. your God is a deliverer. Oh, yeah. He's a battle axe in the time of war. And know that he'll come in and defeat your adversaries. So when David mm -hmm. faced Goliath, he began to praise God and say, I, now I could just see him now. I'm thanking God that he gave me the lion, he gave me the bear, and sure, he had a confidence. He's going to give me this uncircumcised Philistine. So I could just see him praising and back, magnifying and thanking God in advance for the head that he was about to take off of his enemy. And I'm telling you, when you go in, if you've got a job interview, just start thanking God in advance for what he's about to do. Thank God I got the job. But what if you don't get the job? Just say, well, you know what? Thank God I still got the job. Bill Weston gave a, a testimony of his wife who was looking for a job while they was in Oklahoma City. And he says, baby, God told me to tell you, let's be specific about the job. Let's get a card, write down exactly what you want. He says, okay, number one, it's got to be in computers. Number two, it's got to be 10 miles away from the house. Number three, I got to have my own office. Number four, I got to have this amount of salary. Number five, I want my own company vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so she began to put the word of God. I tell people all the time, this is very vital that you put the word of God in everything because that is the basic foundation that we stand on. Uh, John said, this is the confidence that we have if we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. Mm -hmm. And if we know that he hears us, that we have the petitions that we require, desire him. The thing of it is the will of God is the word of God. And so she began to put the word of God all over the house. So she was declaring it everywhere she went. So one day, Bill said she was out in the front yard, and his friend came by and says, well, I, what's, I forget, Veronica, Veronica, you got that job yet? She says, I got it. I got it. He yeah. said, well, where is that? She said, I don't know, but I got it. She declared and called those things that be not to do. They were thanking God in advance mm -hmm. for the job. Right. This is what your God does. When he see that you are thankful and you've already called those things that be not as though they were, and you're walking and acting and talking as if it's already done, mm -hmm. God takes note of that. God takes note of that. And he puts it in his heart, and he says, you know what? Yes. I need you to start doing things, to bring things into, in, into in position. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what God, God is, you can't phantom yeah. how he Amen. does things. How he'll move on your behalf yes. to create a Canadian company to come all to where they were, desiring that they need a place to start an insurance mm -hmm. uh, computer business, then to make it to where when you are have already been forgotten about, they had took her resume and put it in a drawer. You know how they do us. Mm -hmm. They take the resume <laughs> and they put it in a drawer because we're not gonna mm -hmm. see it. They brought new God turned the thing around and brought new management on the scene. The guy was cleaning out the old man's drawers. For some reason, he said her resume kept sticking to his hand. And he kept trying to shake it off into the trash can. <laughs> I'm talking about your God that's able yes. to move mountains. The, I'll be the angel of God was holding that resume to his hand and wouldn't let it yes. go. And he looked at it. He said, hmm. So he called and says, hey, Miss Veronica. So when he called up, Bill, Bill answered the phone. And uh, he saw that she was talking to someone. And she was saying, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, okay. And so he had set up an interview. He says, I looked at your resume. I believe we have a job for you that's exactly, that will fit you, that I believe you're a perfect fit for. Yes. So she went down there, went to the interview. She got back. Bill looked at her and said, uh, okay, so uh, what, 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 what we at? So she pulled out the card. Yeah. And so he says, okay, let's check this stuff off. Mm -hmm. Well, is it in computer? She said, yeah. He says, is it 10 minutes away from the house? She said, yeah. She said, um, is it the salary you're looking for? He says, that and it's $5,000 more above what I'm asking for. He says, uh, for, is it, um, do you have an office? He said, yep, I got an office. He says, and they told me to go pick out my brand new Buick tomorrow. Exactly <laughs> how she acts. Thank you, Being Lord. specific, yes. God Amen. did every one of those things and brought it to pass. Now, you think God loves Veronica more than he loves you? Do you think God loves Bill Winston more than you? That Oh, that we would believe our God. Oh, that we would trust our God. I tell you, it's time to go to another level. It's time to just saying, you know, God, just give me. Any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. You know, God, he could do that. 
But how about you saying, okay, God, mm -hmm. you said you'll give me the desires of my heart. Put down exactly what you believe in God for. So you know what? I believe that when you do it that way, you will have a stronger testimony because then you will brag and boast on your God because you know it was nobody but him. See, a lot of us get into a place where we ask God for things and he give it to us, but the devil steals God's praise. The devil steals God's testimony because we say that's a coincidence. Well, maybe it was a coincidence that I got that. But when you are specific, mm -hmm. when you are direct and definite about what you're asking God for, mm -hmm. there is no way... In the, with the devil in hell can take it from you because you know that you know that you know that the chances are for all those five things to take place couldn't be nobody but, but God. God. Amen. That he would cause a company to come from another country to establish a country there, a company there, all for the sake of bringing his servants' desires to pass. Amen. I'm telling you, the God that we serve loves us so much. And if we'll be thankful unto him and bless his holy name, thanking him in advance for what he's mm -hmm. about to do. I see God stirring some of you up right now. You're already starting to thank God for already. You already have that need in your, on, on your mind. You already say, ooh, thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. So start thanking God for that healing thank that's going to be manifested mm -hmm. in your body. And right now, before the manifestation comes, you need to lift your hands. Like I told him in the service, Put, lay your hands on yourself and say, Lord, thank God I'm healed. Thank God. God, I'm delivered. All those things that I've been struggling with, you know what? The things that's challenging me today will be my testimony from this moment forward. I'll never have to worry about those things. And I will testify the goodness of the Lord, and I will trust him. Let's go higher. Mm -hmm. Let's go higher in him. Let's trust him to do what he says he's going to do. There's no reason for us to get in church and talk about a God, what he can do, and we not put him to the test or prove him. Paul says, in everything, Everything. Does that mean something? Everything. Does that mean when times are good? When that mean that you got the promotion? It's amazing how people thank God for the promotion and then six months later they man the junkyard dog can't stand the job and say, Lord, I'm believing you for another job. Mm -hmm. Missing the essence of what they gave him thanks for to, to, to bring into pass to bring to pass mm -hmm. into manifestation that which he give you. Now here's what I want to tell you. If you believe God for something he gave it to you, do you think that the devil is going to let you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. He will start all kinds of ruckus. He will come on that job that you gave God thanks for now and cause people to start acting crazy, talking crazy, spreading rumors, gossiping, anything <laughs> to take away your joy. Right. But if you make up your mind that, Lord, the same job I gave you thanks for, I'm thanking you for making it good for me. And so this is what I need you to do. Yes. I need you to move some things I move some folks, and I'm telling you, God will do it. I walked on jobs. I know God blessed me, and folk got to acting crazy, and I'd get my oil. Yes, I would, and I'd go to laying and anointing stuff and saying, okay, this person got one or two choices. Either they're going to line up with my leadership, or they're going to have to get gone. And some of them line up and become some of the best team members you ever want to know, mm -hmm. and then some of them just can't get it together, and they act the dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm telling you, God will move on your behalf. He said he'll make your enemies your footstool. And so right now, the thing that you're designed God to do for you, start thanking him in advance right now. In everything, give thanks unto, the, unto God, for mm -hmm. it is the will, concern, the will of God concerning you. Right. Uh, uh, the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So that's what we want to do. So he's giving us, he's giving us keys on how to receive from God. If you give thanks, the power of thanksgiving. I want you to read another scripture. Um, first, look at John the sixth chapter. Just go and find it right quick. John the sixth chapter, the eleventh verse. John the sixth chapter, the eleventh verse. I want to show you the power of thanksgiving. That if we can just really thank God. Now, I'm talking about when you thank God, put your mind on Christ, because He is the one that's going to minister on your behalf. He's the one whose name that gives us access and liberality to receive from God. He says, whatever you do, do it in the name of Jesus. So when we come to the Father in his name, he says, if you come to ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. Didn't say he might. He said he will give it to you. It says 6 and 11? Yeah, John 6 and 11. Okay. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they as much as they would. 
When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now, keep in mind that everything that Christ did, he would always thank the Father. When he, mm -hmm. What did he do when he gets, got to Lazarus to him? He says, Father, I thank, thank you, you that you yeah. always hear, hear me. me. Yeah. The power of his thanks thank you, brought forth a multiplication you, factor that he took yes. two fish and five loaves. And just the power of his thanks was thanking God for feeding the multitude. But Thank you may say, well, yes. he only had two fish and five loaves of bread. What is that among so many? Mm -hmm. He says, I'll tell you what it is. It is I am going to feed. Listen to this. He had already knew what he was going to do. Right. Already knew what he was going to do. He says, I got 5,000 people mm -hmm. to feed. That was one incident. There was another incident where he had 7,000 people to feed. Yes. The same scenario. Thank but is anything too hard for God? Yes. So what he did was he took those two fish and those five loaves of bread, and he began to thank God. And guess mm -hmm. what? As it was distributed amongst the people, it multiplied. His thanksgiving brought forth a supernatural power of multiplying that where the need was, the need was being met based upon the power of the thanksgiving that was given unto the yes. Father. God was obligated to meet that because Jesus had called those things to be not as though they were and said, Father, I'm thanking you for feeding all of these people. Mm -hmm. Lazarus had to come forth being dead in the grave for four days because yes. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. So if we know that he hears us, we have the petitions that we ask ask or desire of him yes. and so G but that was Jesus no he said we are the same way if we ask anything mm -hmm. in his name he is going to give it to us mm -hmm. now we have to actually believe that so again I'll say <laughs> let's elevate let's, let's go to the next level yes. let's stop being afraid of asking God because we're afraid that it might not work I'm gonna ask you a question like we said with the reverse uh, what ifs what if it do work mm-hmm what if it does happen? What if you do pray and it does happen? What if you do pray for the healing and it does come? What if you do pray for the new car and you do get it? What if you pray for the new job and you do get it? What if you pray for, you know, the manifestation and you do receive it? Mm -hmm. So instead of talking about, you know, what if, it, what if this and what if that, all in the negative tense, look at it in the positive and just receive it. Mm -hmm. You have a God that is great. Nobody greater. And he does heal, he does deliver, and he does set free. And in all things, we ought to give thanks for it is the will of God in Christ concerning us. It is his will that you give him thanks. In other words, he wants you to will to do it. Right. Not just say, well, I'm going to give him thanks anyway. No, no, no. It has to be something in you that gives him thanks because he can tell a legitimate thank you. And that one, which is just being sarcastic or vain or empty. But those that give him thanks out of a pure heart. I'm telling you, he will move on their behalf. And so his expression of gratitude brought forth God's hand to move on his behalf. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing we do. I'm telling you, even in the natural, when you have somebody that's always gracious and saying thank you, you're more apt to do more for that person than somebody just look at you like you don't lost your mind. <laughs> so that person, they got some bad manners. Mm -hmm. But that one that was always like, say thank you, that child, we, we, we was, used to go places and then our children would blow people's mind. They'd be like, your children say thank you and this and that. And I'm like, it's sad that we are raising up a generation that don't know how to say yes, ma'am, that don't know how to say no, sir, that don't know how to say thank mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. all that, huh, what, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. No, 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 <laughs> baby. Let me educate you. We still say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Uh, Oh, just a simple yes and a no. Mm -hmm. And we still say uh, thank you because we've been taught better. And the Bible says Amen. in everything yes. give thanks. <laughs> Even for children, teach your children how to say mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Teach your children how to give thanks. And so that when you sit down, you'll see God blessing things. I'm telling you, thanksgiving is powerful. Gary Oliver gave a testimony. He said he remembered a time mm -hmm. that... He didn't have any food for his family. So he set his family around the table, and they all gathered hands. And the children was wondering, okay, we're about to say grace, but is something cooking in the kitchen? Because I don't see anything on the table, and I don't smell anything. <laughs> and he grabbed his children's hands, and they began to thank God 
for the food that they were about to receive. Now, you know how children are. I'm probably praying with one eye open and one eye closed. <laughs> trying to see, okay, have dad lost his mind? Yeah. But he believed God. And I'm telling you, he said there came a knock on the door. He got up and opened the door, and there was food provided for him and his whole family that they may eat. So many pe people have told us this about George. Read the, read the story about George Mueller, that he, had, he owned an orphanage. I think that's his name, George Mueller. The praying man. I'm telling you, he would do the same thing. He would be praying with those kids in, in the orphanage. And at that moment, people would come knock on the door and leave food there to help him provide for his orphanage. All because of the power of thanksgiving. Thanking God yes. for what he's doing. Because what we're saying is, God, when somebody gives you something and you've been taught right, you always say thank you. Mm -hmm. What? Thank you because you've already received. Yes. Now, when it comes to God, we say thank you in advance because even though we don't see it, we know he's already done it, and we accept that fact, and we want to show him that, Lord, I'm, I have great gratitude toward what you've done. Mm -hmm. So we kind of done is already. So we like how God did with Abraham. Did he change his name? Who are you? I'm Abraham. I'm a father of many nations. Didn't have one son except Ishmael. But he called those things that be not as though they were. And look at you and I. We are the seed of Abraham. And Abraham now has a multitude of sons and daughters who are in a numerate number that cannot be numbered. And so God is faithful at his word. And I'm telling you what God would do with just a simple thank you. You know what? Do this. If there's a situation that you're facing and you don't know what else to do and you don't like it, before you speak negatively, just begin to say, Lord, I thank you. Think about what you desire, the opposite of what you're going through, and just say, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. I thank you that I'm healed, delivered, and set free. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Lord, that this here is worked out. I thank you, Lord, that all things are working together for my good. I magnify you. And then I'm telling you, as you do that, you begin to get excited and your eyes open up yes, and you see what mm -hmm. God is about to do. Right. I have not seen, you have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of, thing, uh, heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But you know what? By you giving God thanks, he'll open up your eyes and take mm -hmm. you, let you get a little peek of it. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me show you what I got prepared for you, Tim. Yes. You know, the devil thought he had taken you out, you know, you, you know put that sickness on you took away your finances, caused this bad to happen. But, but, but come here, come here. See, see, see since you're going to give me praise, I'm going to reveal something to you by my spirit. Holy Ghost, open up his eyes and let him see. I'm telling you, when it looks like the enemy is more against you than for you, God will open up your eyes and let you see to know that there's more for you than against you. He'll let you see that there is an army of, a host of ar angels, God's host of army to fight on your behalf, to bring the past to you. He'll let you see the angels that are sinning and descending to minister on your behalf. He'll let you see the car coming. He'll let you see the healing coming. There'll be an assurance in your heart. So you know, yes. I just know that I know that I know that I am healed, delivered, and set free. And you know, I used to worry about it. I used to lose sleep at night. I used to wonder. But you know what? There is a confidence in the assurance mm -hmm. that I am healed, I am delivered, and the need is going to be met. All of my needs are supplied according to his riches and glory. How you know, Reverend? Because there's a peace that mm -hmm. surpasses all understanding. Sure and I am not worried about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Fold that pillow up, mm -hmm. go to sleep, and act like all is well because it is. Mm -hmm. What did the shooting white woman do? Was it the shooting white woman that built the house for Elijah who promised her son, didn't the son end up dying? And then when she was going to the man of God to get him to heal it, and he declared, to her, how, is it, old woman? how is it with the woman? She, what did she say? All is well. All is well. Now, her mm -hmm. boy was dead. But she called those things that be not as though they were. Amen. All yeah. is well. And I'm here to tell you all is well concerning your situation. Start thanking God in advance for what he's going to do. Thank God I'm healed. Thank God I'm delivered. Thank God I'm set free. Thank God all of my needs are met according to his riches mm -hmm. and glory. Thank God I got the job. Thank God I got the promotion. Thank God I'm ready for a new year. I'm ready for a new season in my life. Amen. Amen. Yes. And so listen to me. Open up your mouth and begin to give God praise in advance for what he's going to do. He's going to put a testimony in your mouth. So many times we look at what we're going through and we are fearful. We say the wrong things. We say things that we shouldn't mm -hmm. say. Sometimes our words get stout against God. 
Mm -hmm. Where are you, God? You know, there have right. been people that uh, literally have turned away from God. Me and the bishop was talking about, you know, a lady that seemed to be very powerful in God, and she was preaching and talking about healings and deliverances and, you know, yes. holiness and all those things. And you would really think that she had a strong walk with God. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, she got cancer. The enemy attacked her. Her being ignorant of the Word of God, that ignorance caused her to perish because all of a sudden, this woman who was prevailing mm -hmm. in God Mm -hmm. turned on God, became bitter and angry toward God mm -hmm. and all of God's people and everything that stood for God. She didn't want her pastor to pray for her. She didn't want any of the ministers to pray for her. She didn't want any of the people of the, the people of God to pray for her. She just turned within herself, mm -hmm. got bitter, and right. guess what? She died. The Bible said is it, um, about bitterness, how it is cold as the grave, where is that mm -hmm. envy and jealousy, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. jealousy. Uh, but she just became... But she died angry. She died a bitter, angry person. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that, you know what, if her heart was not right toward God, she didn't end up in the right place. Right. Now, all of that word she had in her did her no good when the test and the trial came. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells you, right. think it's not strange when fiery trials come to try you. Baby, you're going to be tried. If there's a word that's been placed in your mouth, the devil want to take it out of your mouth before you get it in your heart. Mm -hmm. Because he knows if it gets in your heart and didn't come out of your mouth, he's in trouble. But if he can get that word out of your mouth and out of your head before it gets into your heart, he got you. And I just believe that the word was just in her mouth and in her head. But it never got in her heart. She didn't believe it. Because if she had to believe the things that she was preaching, when the enemy came in, like a flood, that word should have came out of her mouth like a standard and yes. fought against the adversary and says, No, cancer, you are a name where Jesus' name is above you, and that at the name Amen. of Jesus, every knee must bow, and every tongue confess, cancer, Jesus. bow down. If she had to believe what she was preaching, that was what it came out of her mouth, mm -hmm. not being angry and bitter toward God. And I'm telling you, the devil will try your words. The devil will see what are you made of. The devil will, make, will see if you believe what you say you believe. But you ought to start mm -hmm. thanking God in advance and say, you know what? I'm thanking God for the cancer that I don't have, the th cancer that I'll never have. While we're walking around, there ought to be some preventive measures in us they start thanking God for all the things that we're going through whenever we pass by somebody that's going through something thank God that you know God thank you that I'm not that that is not have afflicted me and and while you're thinking let the spirit of compassion fly on you and say and I thank you that that person there is healed and delivered in the name of Jesus yes. Christ of Nazareth in all things give thanks give thanks that God preserve you and give thanks for the deliverance that he's going to bring to that person that's sick yes. so if you're watching us tonight and you're going through something. And I don't know how, how many times you've watched us and watched us labor in the word. Mm -hmm. And you just keep hearing. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is getting into your heart. I'm telling you, every time we come with something, mm -hmm. exercise your faith. Exercise your yes. confession. Exercise your profession. Speak the word along with us and declare. You know what? While we're preaching, you're going to be preaching right with us. Mm -hmm. He is my God that heals me. Yes. Lord, I thank you for deliverance. Amen. I thank you for setting us free. I thank you for making a way. I thank you for paving the way. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for making all grace abound toward me, that I have all sufficiency in all things. I thank you, Lord, that I'm a, I have abundance in the lack. I thank you that I have a right mind, God. Mm -hmm. I thank you that my mind is stayed on you. I thank you, God, that I don't thank think you, it's Lord. robbery to be yes. equal with you for the same mind that was in you, you, Lord Jesus, it's in me. And so those are the things that we just begin to magnify God mm -hmm. in and watch him see it. This is, God, this, this is a relationship that we have with God that we should experience this. Mm -hmm. Not just reading your Bible and go to, go to bed and then all the things that we read about, we never get to experience it. Mm -hmm. No. If you're sick, he's your healer. There's promises in the Bible concerning healing. Grab a hold to him and say, Lord, this is your word, and this is what I'm doing. I'm giving thanks for this is your will concerning me. Now concerning me, this sickness that I have, it is not unto death, but that you may be glorified. And so, Lord, this cancer is my testimony for the healing that you manifested, yes, yes. and I'm thanking you in advance. I thank, thank you, God Jesus. I'm healed. Amen. Lord, I thank you that I'm healed. Yes, I thank you that I'm delivered. Lord, I thank you that I'm set yes, free. Lord, and I magnify Jesus. you and begin to praise him. Yes. And then you begin to feel thank his love you, pour out yes. over you like oil, the oil of yes. joy. 
healing bomb of God just permeating you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet and embracing and, 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 and embracing God for what he's doing Amen. and just begin to thank him with a heartfelt thanks with gratitude that she said Lord I thank you for what you're doing not yeah. by might nor by power but by your spirit and I'm not moved by doubt I'm not moved by mm -hmm. familiarity the devil want to make you think that these things are just familiar, and when we get that kind of spirit of complacency, we just take things for granted, and we don't take seriously what mm -hmm. God has done for us, right. not realizing how much He loves us, mm -hmm. that the things that He's already done for us, He will manifest those things. He will manifest it so heartily, and so when I when my when I see the body of Christ, I see the potential that God so desires to express Himself. Mm -hmm. If we just give him thanks, if we just brag on him, if we just magnify him, if we stop talking about what we're going through, if we stop talking about what we don't have, what the enemy has done, what the enemy can do, the enemy is too strong for us, we're too weak for the devil, the devil's too strong, this cancer's too strong, too many people have died from it, there's no such thing as uh, being healed of prost prostate cancer, there's no you know, there's no way you can be healed from HIV. There's, these things can't be healed. The, if you're going to proclaim that, can you not take that same energy mm -hmm. and speak the word of God? Say, wait a minute, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you. Right. But you got all things are possible. Mm -hmm. If you can quench a fiery furnace and cause it to where there is no smoke that would, no fire that would kindle up on your servants and they won't come out smoke, smelling like smoke, not even their hair. You know how easy it is to freeze singe, singe hair? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no way. I mean, I have lit in fires, you know, barbecue fires. You want to make a good barbecue fire, you got to light it up. Mm -hmm. And just see when the and just how quickly it will singe the hair off your arm. But your God is so mighty and so powerful mm -hmm. that when they threw them boys in the fire, the ones, the guards that threw them in that died instantly. But only thing that burnt on God's service were the ropes to set them free. And not only were they in the fire, they were walking in the fire, praising mm -hmm. and magnifying God. They was having an old campfire camp meeting in the midst <laughs> of the fire. And I'm telling you, who was there with them? They're Jesus. God. Why? Because they had declared He is able and giving thanks unto Him. So, whatever you're faced with tonight, I dare you to start thanking Him right now in advance for what He's going to do. Yes, and Lord. just count it as if it's Jesus. already done and you declare. Because this is something that you say that it is before it, it even happens. So, maybe the, the manifestation of sicknesses in your body is there. It's a reality. It's a fact. But in your mouth mm -hmm. is a healing, is a blessing, is a word that you can declare, thank God, I'm healed right now. Right now. And you know what? Don't be moved. Mm -hmm. Because the devil may say, you are an idiot. It's still there. Can't you feel it? <clears throat> and he'll poke mm -hmm. you. Mm. Yeah. And then while you sit up there declaring, thank God I'm healed, that body saying, no, we're not. For you to say that, you're lying. Well, Pastor Tim, wouldn't I be lying if I say, thank God I'm healed and I'm not? Well, no, you wouldn't be lying. You'd be mm -hmm. declaring the word of God. And the word of God said that every man be a lie, but God the truth. Mm -hmm. And the word of God circumvents everything. It exalts itself over everything that is spoken. And guess what? These things that we see are temporal. Yeah. They're subject to change. What changes it? The word of God. Right. So when we say let there be and we call a thing, guess what? This thing here has to change. It has no other choice. So if you're saying by his stripes I'm healed <laughs> and there is sickness that manifested in the fact, the truth of the matter is that God's word will cause that thing to be eradicated. Somebody got to change. It's not God. He says, I'm the Lord thy God. I ch I I I'm not going to be me. I change it not. So guess what? Your situation has to change. Ain't that right? That's right. Your situation got to change. When the word of God is... Now, guess what? Your word has to be a catalyst. If you don't present your word against that which needs to change, it will never change. You're not going to make it move. You're not going to make it move. But when you say, hold up, sickness, got something for you. What you got? Word of God says, by his stripes, I'm healed. What you going to do? 
I ain't doing nothing. Oh, yes, you're going to do something. You know what? You're going to be moved. You're going to move because mm -hmm. I'm thanking God already. I'm healed. Guess mm -hmm. what? It has to move. It has no other choice. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. That makes absolutely no sense. Well, guess what? Don't waste your little pea brain trying to figure it out. You ain't trying to figure out how electricity works, but you're using it. You're not trying to figure out how gasoline is pumped into a car. That if you set a match to it anywhere else, it'll explode. But yeah. you're able to cause your engine mm -hmm. to move and it'll right. cause mobility in your car, in your vehicle. You're not trying to figure it out. All you want to know is when you get in and you turn that key, that's yep. all I want to know. And it, can it get me from point A to point B? That's all you want to know. All you need to know that when you speak the word of God, it's going to do what it's supposed to do and it'll get you from point A to point be and bring you the deliverance that you need and so you know what it's not my job to figure out how god's mm -hmm. going to do something when god's going to do something it's yes. my my Amen. my 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 job to do what he says do it is not your job to figure out how the car is going to get you from your home to your job all you need to know is if you've done everything you're supposed to yes. gasoline is in it crank it up and get from your house to your job that's all you need to know. So concerning the things of God, all you need to know is in everything, give thanks. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. That's all you need to know. All you need to know is by his stripes you are healed. Mm -hmm. All you need to know is he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh yes. in you. That's all you need to know. All you need to know, it is written. Jesus did not have to figure out what God meant when he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Now, what does God mean mm. when he say that? Does he mean he's going to rain manna from heaven supernaturally? No. All he had to do was tell the devil, listen, I am not doing anything. All I know is man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's all he had to say. He shut his mouth. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to say. Devil, right. by his stripes I'm healed. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to tell you that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? As many times you have to tell him, keep telling him. Sometimes it's not just for the devil, it's for you. Amen. Because sometimes we lose faith in what God has done mm -hmm. and what God is doing. And so now we say his word. Now I'm going to let Miss, Miss Vicky say something because I don't talk too much. I'm going to let her say something and come in here and say a little bit about being thankful unto God. I'm quite sure she may have some things that she can reiterate. Look at it. Lexi, I know you didn't. <laughs> yeah. About how, how, how you can open up your mouth and give God thanks in advance for what he's going to do. Or maybe she want to testify what, what she's thanking God for already in advance. I'm telling you right now, I want to see some. Write down on that, on that, on them comments. What you thanking God for right now in advance for what he's going to do. Make your challenge a testimony right now from this moment on. The thing that you're going through, you start saying, I thank God for this. I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Don't be worried about, I don't want nobody to know my business. Guess what? You're going to have to let everybody know your business when you testify. So why don't you just testify now and just start declaring the goodness of our God mm -hmm. and believe that your God has already done it. Over 2,000 years ago, mm -hmm. it has already been done. Now let's see you walk in the idea of receiving it that it may manifest in your life. I'm mm -hmm. telling you. It's time to go a little higher. Let's step it up. Amen. Let's step it up. Step it up. So you got about 13 minutes. So just start I just start challenging the enemy. Start challenging your faith and just say, you know what? I'm, this fear I have, I'm not going to be afraid anymore. Mm -hmm. I've been afraid to declare that I'm healed because it, the doctors keep telling me, you don't, you know, you, you don't have much long to live. That devil is like, Lord, I thank you that I am delivered and set free. Amen. Delivered and set free. Yes. The declaration that I make um, whenever fear tries, the enemy sends a, a word of fear or he wants to make you believe. Um, in other words, when you can really feel that he's trying to take you out uh, or he's challenging you over the very things that you believe in God to bring you out of, as if like you have no power or he's not going to let you go. Well, I took that authority back a long time ago because I do understand that I belong to God. Amen. And I, and I say to him, I don't belong to you. I belong to God. 
And these are things that I say out loud, especially whenever he's getting on my nerves. That's the time to really say it. Sometimes I just strike out, you know, just out of nowhere in the house and just start talking. And sometimes the kids might say, you know, who you talking to? You call me? No, I'm, t I'm talking to the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to let him know. I don't belong to you. And so just from beginning to proclaim that I don't belong to him, then it brings in the consciousness and the awareness that God never left the room. He never left the situation. He never left me. And so he's just waiting on me and still just saying, Vicky, you know, in other words, push back. Sometimes we just forget to push back and we let the devil push us in a corner. And then the only time we come out is whenever, you know, we come out swinging and feeling like, you know, and it was just an act of fear that you just threw some stuff out there. But we don't have to. You can stand in confidence and just say, you know what, I'm taking my stance. Mm -hmm. You know what, don't push me no more. You know, um, we when we were raising Sugar Mama, there was a little, my little cousin that we had. She used to always challenge my daughter. My daughter was... um older than her of course but she was a bold little something and so sometimes she'll just get in her stands and she'd be like you want a piece of me get some <laughs> and she would challenge my daughter with that but she, just to see her fearlessness and to see how my daughter in statue was so much stronger taller but she wasn't moved by it she'll give it all she got now we have to put it in our place a lot of times but that's the way it is at times that we get in our lives to where when the enemy think that he has you and you know and because you haven't been saying anything to him you just been walking around walking around quietly kind of ignoring him he's pesty he'll get all on your heels and if you don't get him off your heels he'll be soon on your back and before you know it he is riding you so I always said in my prayers when I you know acknowledge the Lord and I just said Lord I know even as Jesus told Peter, he said, hey, Satan desires to see you as we. Mm -hmm. But he said, but Peter, I pray for you. And so I know that the Lord is still yet that advocate and that the Holy Ghost is making the intercession for things we don't know to pray for, things that we can't see and however else. And so then I always say to the Lord when I acknowledge him, because then I'm just like, you know what, devil, you can see your way out because this is an A and B conversation. It's between me and the Lord. You ain't even relevant no more. So I just say, Lord, let not him have the say so over me, neither my desires, neither my family. For I serve you and you alone do I serve. I belong to you. And so then I begin to exalt the Lord. Lord, I thank you that you won't suffer my foot to be moved. God got my back. And so these are things that I let come out of my mouth. And believe it or not, it brings forth the courage that I need to where before then I was just like, okay, what am I going to do with this chump today? Because he coming on strong. And it lets me know because I feel the propensity of God's power working a lather in me. You hear me? He working me up to let me know that, look, when you, when you get enough, you will talk back. You will push back. And so even in my... Um, uh, during the times when I went through a really, really bad sickness and and I was, you know, just to the point, just like, hey, I'm out of here. And, and, and the devil was telling me that God didn't love me and why don't I just curse God and die? See, he told Job that. Well, he spoke through Job's wife. You know, you want to keep on maintaining your integrity with this God and he allowing you to go through this? Job, it's better that you die. Why don't you curse God and die, man? You know, because it don't look like nothing good is going to become of you or this situation. And so many times we'll look at things and we're looking at and we're counting all the characteristics and putting them over as if like the devil got this many points and he got this much. And so I can't, it's no way I can come back. The devil is a lie. You know how I'm coming back? Baby, I'm coming back in Jesus name because that name is above every name and I'm coming back and I'm pleading the blood. Let me see you do something with the blood because I mean it. And so when I'm telling you about the blood, no, you know what? You can't undo it. Once I put the blood on it, you ain't getting up. And so that's the thing right there, taking an attitude and taking possession of what you know that your father gave you. If you're going to be like Joseph, your daddy done gave you a coat. Ain't no chunk finna come take my coat. 
You don't put on me a coat of righteousness. You telling me you don't put on I, me to put on the helmet of salvation. All these things you telling me having my feet shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace, having my lawns girded about with truth, all this holding up the shield of faith. All these things right here. Yeah, I'm not afraid because these are things that each and every day that yeah, he, you know, I felt that one, but the, God didn't let it go through my armor, but it was enough of his force that I felt it to know I don't want it to go through there. So, but God said if I fight, if I if I stand believing that he got my back, it is no way he's going to allow my foot to be moved. So, I don't care how hard he push, I don't care how hard he hit, long as I believe the one that said, "Hey, I got you." long as I know that he, if he ain't said nothing different, I ain't believing nothing different. Yep. So if God didn't tell me it was time for me to go, I'm just like, okay, I ain't going nowhere. Because there's been times that we go by our feelings that we just be saying, you know what, Lord, <laughs> I feel like death. I'm knocked on my door. And even though I didn't answer it, he, that Negro came in here. He's in here. I feel him. And so you'll feel these things. But then he said we walk by faith, not by sight. And so it's when I begin to acknowledge and the awareness of that he never left. We are soon shaken when we lose the consciousness of God being right here, even now at thy mouth, for the mention and the calling of his name. Hey, tag God. That lets him know you have confidence in him. If a kid is in trouble, when he scream out mama or daddy, that's confidence because I'm expecting you to come to my rescue. I'm expecting you, you to be right here. I, I'm expecting that you're going to know my voice above any other child. We can pick out our children's cry. It could be five children crying at the same time, and we know when one of them is ours. And that's the same way our God is. He know whenever we cry out. And call on his name when we are in trouble. He said, when you get in trouble, what did he tell us to do? Call on he me. said, call on me and I will answer. I will answer. So, it, so I'm expecting God when this chump is coming in, putting his feet on my coffee table. And I swung the door wide open. Flies coming in. And the flies mean that he bringing a whole lot of other stuff that I don't want in my house with him come to try to take over and he trying to dictate to my children he trying to dictate to my finances he trying to dictate to my body and tell me what it's going to be now nah, this what it's going to be you not stepped up in the wrong house buddy mm. i plead the blood of jesus against you you are lying the father of all lies and the truth ain't in you the truth is going to be up in here in the name of jesus i do command you to leave wait a minute wait 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 all this other stuff you done brought up in here my children being disobedient and rebellion. No, I command you that you're going to cease from using him and her. And you take him by the hand. You take that by the hand. And all y'all pack y'all luggage and get out in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mean it. So when your child come home, wait a minute. Uh-uh. Stop That's right now. You're, you're talking foolishness. Pull out that oil in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I anoint you. I command this spirit to cease from using you. This mouth is made to praise the Lord. This mouth righteousness shall speak. It, this tongue shall speak. And it's going to bring forth. So now straighten up. Now what were you saying? Because we're not going to talk foolish. You're not going to be disrespectful. You're not going to be none of those things. Take authority woman of God. You don't need a man to step in for you to step into your righteousness of who you are in Christ Jesus. He's in you. He's in you. And so therefore, you can still be even by yourself in the natural, but that king is on the inside of you. So let him reign. Let him rule. And let him straighten them kids out. Let him tell you and give you wisdom on how to handle them. So all I'm just saying is, is that God is a spirit and the Holy Ghost all by himself will work and show you things that are great and mighty. Moving in such power and propensity that there is nothing that can get above him or under him or around him. If you believe him. And sometimes some things are so simple as to when he said, mother, you straighten your mouth up and I'll clean their mouth out. Mm -hmm. And then he said, father, if you straighten up your attitude, I'll straighten up their attitude. So everything is leading by example. If you're going to be the 
the train and be the momentum of moving and propelling your family forward, then you got to let God be in control and he will move the whole body. He'll move you. He'll move the husband. He'll move the children. He'll get it all in line. And so if he got to move you first woman, you want that man to leave, let it lead, let him lead you. Then he'll put it all in order. He'll bring him from around you to where he'll be ready to, like Pastor say, take the tiger by the tail. And hey, I not only got him by the tail, but I know what to do with him. Even if he angry on the other end of the tail, me and God can handle him. And so don't be afraid. We are, God did not leave us helpless, hopeless, none of those things. He didn't leave us none of that. He came to in, and sent the spirit of God to comfort us and empower us, people. So, you sure you wanted me to talk? Yes. I'm just trying to make sure Oh, da, 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 All I'm just saying is, is that, look, you got the power. Use it. Amen. And thanking him in advance for all Amen. that you've heard. All the things I know you heard, someone yes. heard that's touching on something Holy that you're going through. Hallelujah. And you've been kind of just going crazy. And before you let the situation drive you crazy, Don't let it. let's thank God in advance thank for what you, he's going to do. Thank you, Jesus. God has already spoken to you. Yes. You've heard the word. He's giving you wisdom, giving you knowledge and instruction. So now, what I need you to do is take that to heart and start yes. thanking him for what he's going to do. Thank Concerning you, your child. And God maybe spoken to you, some of you yes. about how to deal with your children, how to deal with your family, that situation yes. close to you. Thank you, It's Lord. been really giving you a heartache. been causing you sleepless nights. Yes. You know, start thanking God in advance for what he's going to do. And then Thank take the Jesus. wisdom that had been spoken yes, and start Lord. going by. Lord, help me with my Thank mouth. Jesus. Let me stop tearing up. See, a foolish woman tears yes. her own house. Yes. But a wise woman Holy builds Lord. hers. Thank and you, so Jesus. you start building your house and start thanking yes. God in advance. Amen. Sickness in your body. Thank Lord, you, I Jesus. thank you that I'm healed. Yes. Financial difficulty. Lord, I thank you that you are my provider. I thank you that all of my needs are met. Mm. So put your hands on your body. Put your hands on the situation. Yes, Grab Lord. those bills and put your hands on it and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And then begin to declare that which you're Every believing for. Calling those things that be not as yes. though they were. So, Father, we thank which you for this opportunity. Important. Testimonies of Jesus. healing, testimonies yes. of reconciliation, testimonies of oh, deliverance, God, testimonies of how you Jesus. made a way out of no way, how you're turning you situations around, Lord. turning children Lord. around, thank turning you, marriages Jesus. around, turning yes. health around. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord, we give you the praise yes. for it. We magnify you. Thank and you, and we in this and everything, we yes. give thanks. For thank this you. is your will Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus concerning Jesus us. Name. And we thank you for it. Listen, we thank Jesus you for staying tuned in. Just then this allow us to minister yes. to you. And I'm telling you, take this what you've yes. heard and just feast on it and meditate on it. Let it marinate in yes. your heart and your mind. You. And I'm telling you, it yes. will produce a peaceable yes. fruit in your life. It will. Thank God thank you, Lord. that I'm yes, already healed. Mm -hmm. Thank God that I'm already delivered. Yes. Whatever it is you thank God for. You know, you can still keep on putting down there what you thank God for and declare and decree it and believe that yes. it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't see nothing. <laughs> Y'all better put some stuff down there. Put it down there so we can stand in agreement with you and we can put the devil a flight.